H1Z1 makes it that much easier to want to punch someone in the face. League of Legends might bring back Earth Mode, but this time with a twist. Star Conflict ramps up the fight in open space with a Dreadnought update, and Cabal 2 finally starts up closed beta signups. What's happening guys, James Blonde here with MMOS.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending March 30th, 2015. Starting out this week's news is a birthday celebration song thingy video from High Res celebrating the one year anniversary of Smite. Well, since it's launch anyway, so the celebration is over Smite's one year since launch anniversary. There you go. The song is supposed to be a Katy Perry parody, but well, you know, Smite music videos are a bit crazy. Let's not forget this one. Yeah. Anyway, the cool part of the video is that they actually got the community to help them put it together, which is really cool, showing off the entire community that is engulfed into Smite at the moment, which in my opinion gives them a lot of kudos. In other Smite news, if you haven't heard, Medusa is on her way, and she's actually a hunter. A unique one at that. Her mobility makes her a tough target because she can move side to side and backwards quicker than any of the other gods, which also seems to play a unique role on casting her abilities. As you can probably imagine, her ulti is to petrify. No mystery as to what that does, but the cool little added bonus here is if you kill a god just after using your ulti on them while they've turned into stone, the statue remains on the map, potentially the entire time, or at least until someone destroys them with several basic attacks, is what it takes, I think. Sadly though, we don't have an exact release date for Medusa. We think it's probably going to be on April Fools, but not necessarily sure of that. Regardless, I can say I've been waiting for Medusa from the beginning, and the fact that she's a hunter was sort of the icing on the cake for me. In similar news, in the latest League of Legends patch rundown, Feral Pony and Zyrene chat about the changes in 5.6, including Nidalee and the ongoing state of jungle, feeling that some of the tank junglers are a little bit stronger than they really need to be. This patch is directed toward champions that have received a little less attention in the past few months, or ever. But in this rundown they mention that they're happy with the positive changes via the new edition of Jungler Diversity recently released, but there are still some very strong tank junglers that are unique enough champion mechanic wise that got a little overlooked from the private test servers all the way to the live servers, and Feral Pony explains that quite nicely. Other than that, League's latest news, post from today actually, states that Earth also known as Ultra Rapid Fire Mode from last April, is making a comeback with sort of a twist. The mode is now being renamed to Nerf, as in New Ultra Rapid Fire Mode, with slightly different gameplay refinements. Be sure to check the link in the description below to see what changes are being made, but honestly their timing is a bit interesting on this one. But it doesn't seem like a pre-April Fool's joke either. But either way, I'm sure its fans are not going to be too sad if it makes some sort of return, even if it ends up being only temporary. In other MOBA news, Heroes of the Storm officially introduces the new Tomb of the Spider Queen Battleground. The map itself is very compact, though still three lanes, and the gameplay mechanic involved in the map is, of course, the Spider Queen herself helping out the team that pays up in Spider Gems. You get these Spider Gems by killing the lane minions or enemy players, drop off enough gems, and the Spider Queen will push each one of the lanes with a Web Weaver. But if that wasn't enough, they sort of start right at the opposing side's gates. Kinda scary. Plus they can summon melee supports themselves if you don't take them out quick enough. It's actually a really cool setup, and honestly it's one of the aspects that makes Heroes of the Storm stand out. On a side note, it also looks like Blizzard is opening up a bit further in terms of giving out beta keys for Heroes of the Storm. So if you're still waiting to get in, you might actually not have to wait much longer. Okay, so lots of MOBA news this past week, ironically. Infinite Crisis is now officially launched, along with offering special champion bundles available exclusively on Steam. These bundles offer players a choice of two different packages, which include access to a set number of champions. The basic, sitting at $10, gets you eight champions and a golden Superman skin. And the elite bundle offers 34 champions, which I think is all of them, and the golden Superman skin at $30. I can't say plenty of changes have been made to the game since its early days, that's definitely for sure. One nice thing about this though is if you had an account since the first beta as the Infinite Crisis team basically gives you an elite pack for the help supporting the game. Not a bad returning gift if you ask me. But speaking of gifts, if you're playing Infinite Crisis right now, you can definitely pick up a fearsome tyrant Sinestro skin at the giveaway section at MMOS.com. It's a really cool skin and honestly it makes him kinda look like the Deceiver in Nazgoth. 
And for our last bit of MOBA news, I promise, Super Evil Megacorp, man, that's just really fun to say, is preparing to add the newest hero into the first really good mobile MOBA, Vainglory, in their next patch. The new hero is Vox, who uses sound to destroy his opponents and assist his team, which is really cool because it's also the name of a very popular guitar amplifier. Ironic. This highly mobile hero darts through combat and quickly strikes at opponents. When moving through dangerous territory, Vox can emit a sonic pulse that echoes off of enemies, revealing them and providing a critical tactical advantage. From there, Vox can attack and cause damage to bounce and reverberate between nearby enemies, sort of like sound waves. Along with this update is the arrival of the much-anticipated Spectator Mode, one of the most requested features from the community. It really seems like this game is actually coming along nicely. Vox and the Spectator Mode, along with several other game changes, will be available in Vainglory's next update. Well, speaking of requested stuff, H1Z1 released a new video last week showing off new crates, wearables, and hilarious loadout quality emotes. Available now, the new crates will give you access to new wearable items in the form of skins, meaning you'll have to find or craft the original items in order to apply the skin, but once you have it, you always have it. Some of the new emotes make you want to punch babies, or at least the person doing them. Although these new skins are microtransactions in the game, it kind of gives us an idea of the new direction they're going with their cash shop and crates. Hmm. Next up, a new update came in this past week for Star Conflict called Dreadnoughts, which includes new locations, new quests, new alien ships, and of course corporations can start building their own Dreadnought. Dreadnoughts in Star Conflict are huge ships with destructive firepower, of course, and they have a variety of systems which can be constructed and damaged in combat. So for example, when constructing a Dreadnought, you can choose from different weapons and add-ons such as torpedoes, combat drones, and guns of various calibers. One of the new features of Sector Conquest in this update is the possibility to establish control over open world sectors with Dreadnoughts, which can move between locations of open space in order to take part in Sector Conquest. Seeing that these need to be built by corporations, the fights in the open space for sectors will begin as soon as a sufficient number of Dreadnoughts have been constructed, so they're looking to estimate the battle starting around April 16th. It all comes down to how fast people build them. Also last week, closed beta signups have finally started for Cabal 2. ESTsoft announced that players can access the official landing page of Cabal 2 to sign up for early access to the game starting in late April, which truthfully isn't that far away from its estimated launch date, which is claimed to be later on this spring. Along with this announcement, a new character spotlight video was posted this past week showcasing the cloth wearers in Cabal 2, the wizard and the priest classes. The Wizard is a ranged high damage dealing class that converts force into raw power, although they sport light armor, as you might have guessed, so regardless of the high damage, you might want to stay back away from the enemy in this case. The Priest, on the other hand, is a central healer in Cabal 2, who utilizes life-giving force to heal her allies and, of course, damage the enemies by means of anti-healing. This character spotlight is another somewhat longer detailed video, so for more information, watch the entire character spotlight video from the MMOX news post linked in the description below. Speaking of early access, Perfect World Entertainment and Cryptic Studios are giving players a chance to pre-download Neverwinter on Xbox starting this past week in order to prepare for its official launch tomorrow, March 31st. According to the official press release, Neverwinter on Xbox One will utilize console features including friends list, integration, and optimized controls to easy transition the game from PC to console. It's a bit unclear what tier of Xbox Live you'll need in order to play. I don't really know how Xbox One or Xbox Live works in this case, but my guess is seeing that the game is free to play, it will be available to everyone regardless of Xbox Live status. And finally, for a last bit of news, the Skyforge closed beta 2 is just about halfway over now, and along the way, the Alots team and Obsidian Entertainment unveiled all 13 unique classes of Immortals that will be available in some form or fashion to players at the launch of the game. And I say some form or fashion because after playing Skyforge for a little while, one might realize that it can take a fair amount of time to gain access to classes beyond the initial three classes, if only taking the free-to-play approach to the game. At least it's starting to seem that way anyway. According to their official post, variety is the spice of life, and each of Skyforge's classes have been designed to provide players with a unique style, appearance, abilities, and talents 
in order to appeal to a wide range of preferred playstyles. Now, the majority of the classes available at launch are definitely appealing to me, but the most appealing have to be the Kinetic and the Necromancer. The Kinetic can easily rip massive rocks out of the ground and then send them right at their enemies. Or they can control their enemies' movement on the battlefield by altering the gravitational fields around them. That sounds pretty cool. The Necromancer, of course, can control death itself. They can siphon life from their enemies in order to restore their own, all while summoning undead creatures to fight for them. Not to mention they look badass, as do most of the other classes, really. Get more details at the site post at MMOS.com and look for giveaways for Skyforge beta. It seems like they're popping up here and there. Unfortunately, though, we have yet to get beta keys to give you guys. Hopefully that happens soon enough. But anyway, guys, that's about it for all the major MMO news and announcements of this week. If you haven't already, be sure to stop by the new MMO Hut site. It relaunched today, March 30th, and it offers much more in terms of info, visuals, and overall navigation. Just, you know, keep in mind that it's still under construction. Like always, if you're looking for more information about the news featured in the recap, check the links in the description below, or head over to MMOHuts.com news for even more MMO news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below or head over to mmohuts.com slash forums. And until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.